why it's important to take and put the scriptures together line upon line and precept upon precept and, and put the witnesses together. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That way I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm not bringing false accusations. That's what should have happened to those who, and that's going to happen to those who accuse and murder Jesus. He's sitting on the right hand waiting until his enemies to be made his footstool. That's right. It's going to be payback time mm -hmm. in a mighty big way. Yes, sir. We finished there? Verse 20. And those which remain shall hear and fear uh -huh. and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. Yeah, they need to reenact this law. When you swear me in, I'm going to read this to you. You understand? So even if you kill me, guess what? You've been judged already. You can't say you didn't know. Let's go to Matthew, the 18th chapter. <laughs> Matthew 18, and we're going to read two verses. 18, we're going to read 19 and 20. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. We're just going to look at this because, I mean, the God, the, the God of this Bible is constant with this. God, is, he don't change. He, he's a God that you don't have to second guess. You understand what I'm saying? It's good to have a God that you can know to that degree because I used to didn't know nothing about God, period. You understand? I, I, I thought he had an attitude with me because I was catching hell on all angles and different. You understand? I said, man, if there is a God, <laughs> I'm getting away from him, Jack, because... It's rough out here, you understand? But see, with a little knowledge and understanding, I understand why we go through what we go through. God's trying to get our attention, you know, so he don't have to ultimately destroy us. So I thank you, Father, for all the head whippings, all the, all the knots, I still got some of them up there. Matthew 18, we're gonna read verse 19 and verse 20. Go ahead. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And see, you, we ain't talking about two women out at the mall. Girl, I'm going to get that dress and touching and agreeing about some foolishness. They ain't talking about that. You know, Israel will take stuff overboard, right? So he says, I say... <laughs> Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask and it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. But go ahead. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And that's even when you put the witnesses together, when you line upon line and precept upon precept here a little and there a little, you putting all the witness testimonies together and they all agree. And that's when you know you found truth. That's why the Lord says, I'm in the midst of you, because God is true. You understand what I'm saying? But now let's go a little bit further. We're going to clarify exactly what the Lord is saying. Let's go to 1 John, the fifth chapter. We don't want folks to get caught up thinking that the Lord is just going to give you that house, <laughs> give you that car, whatever it is that you think you're touching and agreeing about on earth. That ain't what it's about. 1 John 5, and we're going to read <clears throat> 1 John 5, pick it up, we're going to read verse 14, and then we're going to skip. 5 and 14, okay, go ahead. And this, is the and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And so it's almost sound like that's what the Lord is saying, right? Compared to what we just got through reading. But now skip back and pick it up and let's get some sense out of this. Pick it up at verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. and these three are one. Go ahead. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three, and these three agree in one. Uh-huh. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. 
Mm -hmm. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not in he that believeth not God have made him a liar uh -huh. because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And because there's three witnesses throughout this whole scripture, brothers and sisters, it's talking about the three. It's talking about for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost took that message and he gave it to the prophets of old. So we can find a, we can find a witness that will verify anything that we need to know pertaining to the will of God, because that's what it's about. It's about finding out what God's will is so that we can perform what pleases him. You finished there? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go further. Go to Revelation, the first chapter. See, this way nobody can say, well, Brother Wayne said this. No, Brother Wayne said this because the witnesses are who said it. And I can show you other witnesses who agree with it. Revelation, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Uh -huh. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Uh -huh. But now let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter. Second Peter one and pick it up at verse 16. Second Peter one and pick it up at verse 16. Okay, go ahead. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Uh-huh. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Go ahead. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we, when we were with him in the holy mount. And so the disciples heard the voice of God speak to Jesus and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. They heard that voice. Go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Uh -huh. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And so he says, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. And that's what you're supposed to line your thinking up with when it comes to learning what God's will is. So he says, we have a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. In other words, it's going to clarify whatever questions or whatever debates we might have. But go ahead. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's of no private interpretation. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in, the, in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's why even Moses was the first one to talk about the suffering of Christ. Moses talked about the Christ coming and paying for our sins. Moses talked about a prophet that was going to come, and we better listen to his words. All the way from the beginning, brothers and sisters, so we can find and put the scriptures together to prove anything we need to understand in this book. But now, let's go to Acts, the 26th chapter, and we got one after that. <clears throat> Acts 
Acts 26 and pick it up at verse 21. Acts 26 and pick it up at verse 21. Because this was after Paul had got his conversion, after he had that experience. Paul was persecuting the church and killing saints. Paul was there when they stoned Stephen to death. The Bible says that they laid their garments at, at, at Saul's feet, which became Paul. But now, after Paul's conversion, he ran into a whole lot of flack. Just like Brother Ron was saying, when you start learning and understanding what the Bible is saying, people start looking at you crazy. Acts 26 and pick it up at 21. Go ahead. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Uh -huh. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, uh -huh. saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. And that's what we do. What the prophets say, we align scriptures up, New Testament, Old Testament, and we make the scriptures line up to show, not, the, not my opinion, but what the word of God is saying. So Paul says, he said, none of the things than what the prophets and Moses did say should come. And what did Moses know about this? Go ahead. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people to, and to the Gentiles. And so Moses had that knowledge? Yes, he did, brothers and sisters. There's no schism in the book. Everything that was needed for Moses to be saved was there. Just like everything that we need to be saved is here. Moses was just on the other side of Christ. We on the opposite side of Christ, but he knew. He knew. He says that Christ should suffer and after should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and unto the Gentiles. Go ahead. And as verse 28 no verse 24 and as as he thus spake for himself Festus said with a loud voice Paul thou art beside thyself much learning doth make thee mad and Festus saw what and heard what Paul was saying because he knew that we just got through stoning Stephen but what you talking about right now Paul he says much learning done made you mad go ahead but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I freely speak. Uh -huh. I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for, for this thing was not done in a corner. Uh -huh. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Go ahead. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Oh, no, he didn't. Thou persuadest me to be a Christian based off of the prophets and the testimony of Moses? Because hmm. that's what truly Christianity is, brothers and sisters. That's truly what it is. I don't know what they got out here today, what that's called. Oh, yeah, I do. It's idolatry. It's idolatry in the highest form. But the origin of Christianity, Moses established that. You understand what I'm saying? Abraham established that. All the way to the beginning, brothers and sisters. Nothing in the New Testament made a new church. This has been around and is still ongoing. But because people don't know how to rightly divide the truth to get some understanding, there's been a big schism in the church of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, and this is it. Second Corinthians 13. And pick it up at verse 1. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 1. Let's see if anything changed when Paul was in the ministry. Paul came a little bit later. Paul didn't even see Jesus as far as face to face. He saw him in the vision and that was it. 2 Corinthians 13 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. This is the third time I am con 
I am coming to you. Uh -huh. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So he taught the same way that we're teaching, didn't he? He said in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Go ahead. I told you before and, and foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent now I write, I write to them which here for heretofore have sinned and to all other that if I come again I will not spare. So Paul is telling them hey if I got to come one more time I'm coming in wrath. Go ahead. Since, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me which to you were is not weak but is mighty in you. Okay that's good. And that's, that is rightly dividing the word of truth. May the Lord add a blessing for the reading of his word. In Jesus' name. Now we have some announcements. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available Please place your order in the offering box with your donation. Your order will be ready next Sabbath. Tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations and or on YouTube. Feel free to join us at all our Bible study classes. They are Question and Answer Bible Study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via our conference call line. Sabbath services are held twice, Friday night at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 1 p.m. Children's Bible classes, children's Bible class at ages 4 to 12, Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Team Forum Bible class, ages 13 to 19, Saturday at 5 p.m. See your lesson heading for other class locations and info. We baptize in the name of Jesus. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the list at the podium and speak with Brother Wayne or Brother Devin. Our dress code is, all clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. During service, men are to remove hats and or head coverings, while women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses one through seven. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, Please remove him or her from the sanctuary. For convenience, we have a TV monitor, monitor area in the rear of the class. Any tithes and or free will offering should be put in an offering envelope and placed in an offering box at the front of the, of the sanctuary. Please pray for our strength as we pray for you. Peace and blessings to you and yours in the name of Jesus. Peace. Uh, there is one announcement here. Uh, we want to uh, announce the Youth Day, which is going to be Sunday, December the 9th. And uh, for anybody to sign up for the potluck, you need to see uh, Sister McCall or Sister Lawanda. It says, Food Fun Fellowship. Lesson starts promptly at 12 p.m., followed by a potluck lunch. Immediately after closing, we will travel to an outside destination for family-friendly activities, and all ages are welcome. And that's the only other announcement. If, if that's it, uh, nobody else has got anything, we're going to stand up and face the rules and close out. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. For 
us mercy and do us forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy and do us forever. For his mercy and do us forever. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Eternal One. The Eternal One. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hot seat time, bro.